everybody, welcome back. I hope you're having a good Thursday or whatever day it is that you end up watching this. Um, I hope you're having a good week. I hope you had a better week than me. Um, the kitten that I showed you guys that we got, um, we took her to her first vet visit last Thursday. And on Friday morning, I was laying with her in my bed, just drinking my coffee and being cozy. And I got a text message from our vet saying your cat has a parasite. So I didn't know what that meant. And I Googled it and I quickly found out that this is a super contagious parasite that it, well, it can be transmitted to humans. It's not usually like there's a, there's a low chance that we can catch it, but we can catch it. Um, so I was just immediately like, you gotta go in the bathroom, girl. So I took her to, I took her to our guest bathroom and that is kind of where she's living while we try to keep her as clean as we can. Um, without giving you all the disgusting details, she can very easily reinfect herself just, you know, due to the nature of her being a cat and using a litter box. And basically it's just been cat diarrhea all the time. That's, that's, that's been my life for the last week. So we've just been really tired, like trying to get up in the night to take care of her and clean her up and we're hoping to make this a one week experience. Um, we don't get to pick, but I'm hoping that we're gonna be done with this soon. We did take another sample in today. So hopefully tomorrow we'll find out kind of what we need to do and hopefully her meds will start to kick in and help her with her diarrhea problems. So I'm, you're welcome. I know that's what you came here for. You came here for the diarrhea content. Uh, I have over delivered, you're welcome. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you had a nice week that didn't involve taking care of a kitten <laughs> in that way. <laughs> um, having a kitten, I think, will be 99% positive, and this is just the awful 1% that we have to go through right now. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. <laughs> um, anyway, because of all of that and the level of exhaustion that I have been suffering, my husband too, not just me. He's been doing a lot of the work too. Um, I don't have an incredible amount of stuff to show you. I did dig some stuff out just to like keep this a little more interesting. So I do think that it'll still be a fun episode, but I am um, just furiously knitting along on this cardigan for my husband because I got pretty behind. Um, so I can't, I honestly can't remember what I had done last week, but at this point I have two sleeves done and I definitely know that I had the hem done last time because I started with the hem and the cuffs while I was waiting on my contrast color to come in. Um, but I now have this much of the body and as you can see, I got my afterthought pockets placed. If you've never done an afterthought pocket, I highly recommend it. I actually just love afterthought anythings. Like, um, I've done an afterthought heel on a sock. I really like it. I don't know. I just, I feel, it feels magical, like, to do something like this. I feel like I'm pulling one over on everybody. I'm like, I got a secret to tell, and it's called the afterthought pocket. <laughs> um... Anyway, so for anyone who doesn't know what an afterthought pocket is, you basically use a piece of scrap waist yarn to hold your stitches. Well, you're not holding your stitches, but to close up two rows and to hold a spot. And then the, the yellow, I'm not explaining this well, the yellow yarn is just holding the stitches on either side. So the pink in the middle is kind of just holding everything together. And then you've got your two rows 
upper and lower on hold on these yellow pieces of scrap yarn. So when you get ready to put the pockets in and you need a hole here, you just take all that pink yarn out and then the yellow yarn is still holding your upper row and your lower row and you can just do what you need to do with that once you're ready. So I'm not ready to do my pockets yet. I'm going to save that for later. So I'll just keep this on hold here. And I chose these really fun pastel -y, beautiful Eastery colors from my waist yarn because as I've complained incessantly before, I'm just using these real neutral <laughs> boring colors for my husband, but he's going to love it. The row that I'm on, or the round that I'm on right now, well, the series of rounds that I'm on right now are really low contrast. Like, I'm kind of having trouble almost telling the difference between my contrast color and my main color. It's been interesting. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this is going to look in the finished pro project because... I mean, when you're right up on it, you can tell a difference. And I'm, I don't know if it's going to come up on the video. When you're right up on it in real life, you can tell the difference between both of them. But it's super subtle. So I hope that this isn't just going to look like a defect or a mistake when the whole thing comes together. But we'll see. I haven't actually taken a look at the yarn in a second. So yeah, like the outside is just this real dark charcoal and there is still some some twist in it and some variation, but it looks like in the middle we're going to go back to a lighter color. So we'll at least have that in a couple million more rounds. <laughs> but yeah, it's going good. I am very behind. Uh, I would say probably at least two or three days in my schedule behind. It's not ideal, but life, I had to take care of my baby. Um, yeah, I have done no other knitting than that. Nothing else has happened. Uh, I have not gotten any further on my knit along cardigan, the pressed flowers cardigan that I'm making with my two friends. Um, we have been setting like little metrics so that we won't like one of us won't like work exclusively on this and be done and then the other people are just like a hundred rows but or rounds no rows because it's knit flat so we don't get like in front of each other or behind each other too much and we can kind of stay together so the goal that we're on right now is that we would have the um the ribbing the hem the ribbed hem of the bottom of the cardigan done by the end of the month. So I have less than a week to get that done. That's going to be okay. It's just one by one rib and there are 251 stitches and we've got like 18 rows or something. Uh, I don't know. I haven't read the pattern. So I got a lot of catching up to do, but I don't feel scared yet. <laughs> and my friends are nice so they're gonna be kind to me if I get behind I don't want to but it's gonna be okay um hmm. that's it that's it for projects right now I still haven't worked any on the whips from the first episode uh I've just been putting all my time and energy into this guy and I'm just gonna keep working while we talk um, so no yarn acquisitions this week for sure. Um, I haven't gotten anything in the mail. I have ordered a couple of things, but I also got a, got rid of several things, um, on Reddit, on the yarn swap Reddit. Um, so Again, if you hadn't seen my other episode where I talk about that in depth, I really highly recommend that. It's just um, the Yarn Swap subreddit, and you just post what you have on there. And if you want, are if you're able to accept trades, then you can trade people skein for skein, 
or if you would rather just have payment, you know, actual cash for your yarn, you can kind of just post your prices and if people are interested, they'll reach out to you and it's really great. I have like, I've done like six trades now. So, um, just six different lots of different things that I didn't, you know, love anymore or knew I wasn't going to get around to using now or at least for a very long time. So I know that there are things that I would rather have right now because as we've talked about, there are so many cool things coming out right now. And um, so yeah, do I feel a little bad for buying more yarn? Kinda. But <laughs> I also feel kind of justified in the fact that I am getting things out. So that was the goal, right? We're going to get things out and we're hoping to get more things out and finished or sold than we are bringing things in. So I do think that's still the case. Um, I have several more things that I'd like to get rid of that um, didn't really pull any interest on Reddit right away. I do think it's something that, you know, I don't think they're invaluable. I just don't think that it reached the right people before it kind of fell down on the list. So I don't really know what the rules are on that. I don't think, it doesn't seem like people are reposting or anything. So I don't think I'm going to do that, but um, I might think about just going the eBay route or something. Um, I have bought yarn from eBay a couple of times from um, independent sellers and from yarn stores who have um, an eBay, eBay presence. So that could be something to explore too, just to get rid of those last few skeins. But it's kind of nice to do it over Reddit just because, you know, you, you might have to pay a PayPal fee here and there or, you know, a Venmo fee or whatever. But other than that, it's pretty, pretty low cost. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I just got a notification from somebody who just got some of my yarn that I sent through Reddit and they were like, yay, I'm so happy. It's so, it's so great. We love it. So that's always fun. Um, yeah, one more thing about, uh, selling on Reddit. Um, everybody's been so lovely. Obviously I don't know them. Like I can't see pictures or anything, but like you can just tell like the spirit of the fiber community is just really lovely and everyone on there that I've dealt with has been really forthcoming, really honest and just really lovely. And we've had a couple little chats here and there about like uh, different dyers and like uh, yarn buying habits and things. And it's just been really fun and lovely. So again, highly recommend you check it out. The more people who are on there, the more people we can match up and trade with and all that. So yeah. Um, oh, so what am I wearing today? I am wearing my halibut hat. It's kind of hard to, to model it here. I'm not going to take my hat off because the hair is not in a good place right now. Um, this is the halibut hat by Boylan Knitworks. Um, when she made this pattern, I knew I had to make it because, um, my husband and I spent a whole summer living in Homer, Alaska, and we both worked at a fish processing place. Um, basically people go out on like fishing trips and then they bring their fish in to be processed and frozen and then shipped out to their homes so that they can well they could either um box it up and we they take it on the plane with them or um we ship it fedex all the way to their house so that it's waiting on them when they get home which is really cool so um anyway we both spent a summer in homer he's he actually did two summers there and just having this little reminder of Homer, which is actually where Boylan Networks lives. She lives in Homer, Alaska. Um, having this little reminder is just really sweet. And it was a fun pattern. I'm not like in love with how it fits. I don't hate it. It's not my best fitting hat. Um, I actually made this with the intention of giving it to my husband, but it's too small for him. So now it's mine. Uh, yeah, but 
I, I really do like the mo motif and it's fun and comfy. I can't remember what I made it out of. It's some kind of um, Hobie Merino, 100% Merino base. I think it's Superwash. I can't really remember. Um, and then, okay, so this is, I wanted to pull out this sweater for a reason. You will never see me wearing this again. This is the, oh, I'm sitting on my feet and they're asleep and it hurts. It doesn't hurt. It's just that bad feeling. You know what I mean? Okay. I'm wearing my Weekender sweater. Let me just show you what it looks like before I sit back down. Okay. I gotta sit on my butt. I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit so I can sit. Whew. Okay. This is how you know you're getting old. I used to always sit on my feet and it was fine. So now I'm, I'm just struggling. Okay. I wanted to also show the neck. So I have, I love this pattern on other people. I hate this pattern on me. Um, I made this with my friends, Katie and Molly, who I'm doing the pressed flowers knit along with right now. Um, we all three made it. Molly and I made the regular Weekender and then um, Katie made the Weekender light, which I think was on, I think it's DK. Maybe, was it fingering? I, I really don't know. Anyway, this one is worsted. The regular one is on worsted yarn. Um, I've got a couple of problems with it. Um, so I used to be able to pick out one of these, one of these slip stitches that really bothered me. I can't really find it anymore. Um, I didn't like love how, how it looked. I guess I kind of just like pulled stitches on either side to kind of make it better and it is no longer bothering me. Um, the other thing that bothers me, and this is not at all unique, I've seen this complaint about um, Andrea Mowry's patterns a million times, and honestly, I've made quite a few of her patterns and have not had this complaint before, except for this sweater. The sleeves are so tight, like, I don't know if you can see, but there's like almost negative, there might be negative ease in this if, I mean... There's no positive ease, that's for sure. Um, you can also see like, it's kind of like, doesn't come up to where my actual arm meets. I guess I could make it, but that feels even weirder. Um, I also don't love the neck. I just, I don't have a problem with a boat neck, but just the way that this one fits, and I think it's because the sleeves are so tight. I just don't love that. I do really love the shoulder detailing. And look, you can see like since the sleeve is so tight that the stitches are kind of pulling in some places. I do really love this. Like I have no problem with this and would love to see this in another one of her designs. Maybe she has one. If she does, let me know. Um... Yeah, between the really tight sleeves, um, the neck, and then the fact that this is my fault. I made it too short. Um, I already showed you. It's just not a great fitting sweater. And I do really like this yarn. This is um, Cascade 220, and this is Japanese Maple Leaf. I love this color, and I was worried it wasn't going to look nice on me because I'm so pale, but... Maybe it doesn't, but I just, it doesn't bother me. I like it a lot. I think it's a really pretty color. Um, it's not, I don't know if it's actually heathered, but um, it might be a little bit heathered, but it's just a really beautiful, like, nice reddish orangey brown. It's pretty. Got something on me. So anyway, 
I want to frog this. It's, I, I'm not going to wear this again. Like, like I said, I put it on so that I could show you like my problems with it and why I'm wanting to frog it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel bad. Like, <laughs> like I don't hate it. It just doesn't fit good. And like, I don't know. I just, I feel like we could do something better with this yarn. And I've got all this yarn that I took to make the sweater. And then because I made it so short, I also have a whole other skein and a partial skein. So I can make like whatever I wanted out of this really lovely yarn and probably be happier with the second final product. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to frog it. And now that I frogged that sweater for my husband, the fur fox sake, like, I'm kind of, like, bitten by the, the frogging bug. Bitten by, bitten by the frogging frog. <laughs> um, now that I've done it, I know that it's going to be okay. I know, like, I have not thought about that fur fox sake sweater one time in a positive way. Like, I'm not like, oh, what if I finished it? No. That has not happened one single time. I um, <laughs> I have definitely made my feelings on that known. Um, don't miss it. Don't have any regrets. So I think that I would feel the same way about this one. Um, I think there's just a little sentimentality because, you know, we, me and my friends worked on it together. Yeah, see, look, that's just weird. It's very odd. <laughs> Yeah, so I think, like, this yarn deserves to be something that I like, and we can do better. So this is going to go away. Sorry if you like it. Say goodbye. You can watch this video again if you love it. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know when I'm going to get around to doing that, but at some point, a worsted weight lovely pattern is going to come out, and I'm going to be like, Let's go get that Japanese maple leaf and make something better. So, let's see. Like I said, I didn't have any acquisitions, no yarn coming in the mail right now. There will be some for next time because I ordered some stuff. But I did pull kind of my, I went through my stash and I pulled like my top three sweater quantities that I wanted to show you guys. Now, most of my sweater quantities are in fingering weight, and that is for a couple of reasons. I find that I really like um, lighter weight sweater patterns, um, you know, just because they're thinner so that they're more comfortable. I live in the South, so it's not like I can wear like huge worsted weight cardigans and sweaters all the time. Um, the other thing is that I am... I like to knit on a budget and buying indie dyed yarn is not cheap so to buy a um sweater quantity of dk or worsted like i'm gonna need more than the four skeins that i need to make a fingering weight sweater for myself and honestly in some cases i can kind of almost squeeze it out of three but i like to have that extra one just in case and at some point, I'm going to start doing some kind of scrappy project, so I'm fine with having leftovers. Anyway, um, indie dyed yarn is expensive, so I just kind of gravitate towards the fingering weight route because I know that I can kind of keep it a little bit lower in budget. Not cheap by any means, but, you know, a little more affordable for myself, so... Um, most of my stash yarn that I will end up showing you ever is going to be fingering weight, and that is why. So I grabbed, let me get these on screen here. I grabbed three of my favorites, and I'm just going to show those to you. So the first one is one that I mentioned before. This is kind of like my bougiest yarn. This is Madeline Tosh Pashmina, and it is just a really lovely, dark, rich, almost has like a little bit of royal, a little bit of cerulean, little navy, um, 
I guess you would call it a tonal. But this is 75% um, superwash merino, 15% silk, and 10% cashmere. So I think I previously I said this had more cashmere in it than it did. It's so soft and it's so like... I usually don't like when there's a bunch of silk in my yarn because it's too shiny, but this really isn't like that. It's just really soft and has, you know, this is as much shine that I would ever want in my yarn and it doesn't even have that much. So I really love this. I have, well, this is actually a sport weight. Um, and this is 360 yards, so I have four of these. So at some point, this will be a really beautiful sweater. I do have one picked out for this. I bought this specifically for it because it called for a um, yarn that's discontinued that is very similar in um, composition that this yarn is. So. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what the pattern is called and the designer has a really beautiful name that I can't <laughs> pronounce off the top of my head. So at some point when I get ready to work on this, you'll have all of the relevant details, but I am absolutely not ready to start this project. It's going to be a big one. Um, so more details to come, but I did want to show you this loveliness just to have something to show you. So again, we're looking at my top three sweater quantities that I have. The next one that I have to show you is kind of a funky one. Now there aren't that many projects on Ravelry with this yarn made, so it's kind of tough to see how this is going to end up swatching out. Um, but my next one I want to show you is this really beautiful black and cream colored yarn. And this is like spun together. It's a two ply and it's spun black and white and then it has some just regular white on white spun areas. And this is Camellia Fiber Company. Um, she is local to Nashville. So she has a studio somewhere in Nashville and sells her yarn in the two local, I think we only have two local yarn stores like dedicated to actually having just yarn. Um, yeah, she's local to Nashville and she is super lovely. I've bought a few things from her and she is just so generous. She always, always likes, you know, giving you a little gift if you spend a certain amount. And one time I even bought a mini set and she included a little extra item in there. And I reached out to her and I was like, hey, you accidentally sent me something extra. And she said, no, I did that on purpose. That's for you. And I just thought that was so sweet. And it made me so happy and just like, it was just such an unexpected surprise that that was something that I wanted to kind of pass along to somebody. So actually one of my um, Reddit traits, I ended up just somebody was interested in only half of one of my lots of yarns and I ended up just sending her the whole lot because I was like hey somebody did something really nice for me here's something really nice for you like just kind of let's pass it along and spread the wealth and the the gift giving and just be sweet to each other because we can so I um yeah that that honestly like getting that little gift from Camellia Fiber Company and then giving that gift really just like, I mean, just the joy that that inspired for the week surrounding like each occurrence, like the get, the getting and the gifting really just made me really happy. So I encourage you if you feel pulled to just be kind or generous to somebody, just do it because honestly, it's almost selfish because you're going to feel so good when you do it that, um, that you're gonna get a whole bunch of joy from it. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, so that is the second one that I'm excited to use. The The projects on Ravelry, like, they're kind of interesting. I kind of want to see what this would do held double with some mohair and just kind of kind of to um just to blend out some of these stripes because some of the projects on Ravelry are pretty zebra-ish like really stripey I don't have a problem with that but it's not like really something that is speaking to me so I want to I really want to contemplate what I end up doing with this but it's really special and I haven't seen a lot of things like this out there and I just can't wait until I find the perfect project for this and figure out how to make it work for me. The last of my special sweater quantities is... I was so excited to get this. I really thought that I would never get this. This is Explore Knits Moonstone color colorway. And again, when I was looking on Ravelry, it's really kind of hard to find projects that are finished or made, you know, even just any garments that are made out of this because I think that everybody like me buys this and then just hoards it. I haven't had this for that long, so I wouldn't exactly consider myself hoarding it and just considering it too precious to use. I do think I'll use this for something and hopefully this year. Um, but I think that there's no way that this wasn't really popular. I think everybody bought this and then just kept it forever <laughs> and didn't make anything out of it. Um, I'm really glad that I brought this out because she, Allie from Explore Knits is getting ready to put out her Joshua Tree National Park in I mean, it's not the same, but it's kind of similar. And th this has been a really validating experience in that I don't need both. I don't need a sweater quantity of Joshua Tree National Park when I have this. They're too similar. Um, I should pick a different color. If I end up getting something from her, it will be something that is not so close to this. So. It's looking really brown from far away, but it's just really lovely periwinkles, pinks. There's a little bit of like a maroon, dusty brick color in here. There's, it's just, it's got a lot of fun, beautiful colors in it. So yeah, I don't, I don't need Joshua Tree. Do I love it? Yes. Is it beautiful? Of course. I don't need it. Now, if I buy it and you see it on here, mind your business. <laughs> but I don't I don't think I'm going to. I think I think I can pick something else. All right. So with that, those are my, you know, most precious sweater quantities, I would guess. Um I do have, you know, of course I've got other yarns in my stash that maybe I'll bring out and sh show whenever I don't have something new to me to show um but I just think that this is a really fun way to you know it's not technically an acquisition but it was at one time and y'all haven't seen it so it's new to you I think it's a nice way to just be like this is a yarn that I purchased that I was very excited about and that I'm still very excited about and let's pull it out and make a big big deal about it and we can still get excited about what we have without having to make another purchase. So, yeah. I encourage you, if you have a larger stash like I do, get your yarn out. Look at it. Feel the inspiration. <laughs> Feel the gratitude for the fact that you already have it in your stash. And just get excited about using what you have. Like I said... No shame about buying stuff because I have certainly bought just a few things here and there. And like I said, I have I have some purchases coming up that are going to happen out of this Explore Knits collection and probably the Coast to Coast collection as well. So 
no shame at all. It's okay. But for my personal goals, I'm going to keep trying to get rid of some things that are not sparking as much joy and bring in more things that I am super excited to use and to knit with. So I am going to spend the rest of my day working on this guy. And I really hope that next time I am recording that I am pretty close to staking. So that is kind of the goal. I haven't really reworked my schedule now that I've fallen so far behind, but um, I have quite a bit of knitting time coming up in the next few days, you know, barring any unforeseen natural disasters, diarrhea parties, <laughs> kitten extravagances, <laughs> like anything else that could come in between me and finishing this sweater. Um, I think that I can still finish it. I, I'm just, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm discouraged. I am cautious about how much I have left to do and how much time I actually have to do it, but I don't think it's impossible for me to still finish even though I'm two to three days behind. Um, next week I will probably have a better idea of whether I'm going to get done or not because that will be one week out from um, leaving for our trip and I would like to have this completely done by then. I will block on the road, but I don't want to block on the road. So next week is really going to be a, a pivotal like, okay, we're finishing and we're going to blow through this or a, hey, we tried, we did our best, life got in the way, it's okay, that kind of thing. We'll see. Um, I hope that you have lots of time to knit and be with your families and pet your kittens and, um, yeah, just don't forget to be kind to each other and try to do something nice for somebody. It doesn't have to cost money. Just, um, think about that last time that somebody told you that you looked nice or that they liked what you were wearing and how much that kind of boosted the rest of your day and try to pass that on to somebody to today and um, I hope that good karma also comes back to you. I hope you have a good rest of your week. Bye!